Hello guys, so in today's video we're going to take a look at a few tech items that I saved from e-waste. Um, we got quite a lot of stuff to go through and this is going to be a pretty fun video. Um, so yeah, let's just have a look um, at what I saved from being thrown away at my thrift shop where I work. So we got a computer to go through, two phones and a TomTom -tom, or a navigator or whatever you want to call it. First, let's have a look at this TomTom, -tom, or, well, that's what we call it in the Netherlands here. This is actually just a navigator. It's not that special. I will not be keeping this. I will be smashing this with a friend. I don't know if I'm going to make a video about it. Pretty sure the battery is actually dead. No, it's not. I did charge this. Uh, it worked, but it didn't pick up any signal, and they said that they were going to throw away, so I just put this in my pocket. <laughs> I'm just going to have some fun with this. I'm not going to actually keep it. Uh, it works fine. I've reset it. Um, you can sadly not put Linux on here. There are some, there are some TomTom -tom navigators that you can put Linux on. I don't think this is one of them. This one is really old and bulky. If you're wondering, if you're curious, this is the. Uh, let's have a look. TomTom -tom One Third Edition, five hundred twelve megabytes. Whatever the 512 megabytes is for, I don't know. Maybe it's RAM, maybe it, uh, it's probably just storage. Probably it's just storage, yeah. So yeah, I will not be keeping this. Um, but it is pretty funny to have for a while, I guess. My dad actually had a TomTom. -tom. He had a TomTom -tom Go. And so yeah, this brings back a few memories, despite that this one is way, way older. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing I got. Second thing is this. Second item is this A AEG phone. This is the this is a household phone. This is just this is not a cell phone. It's a ho household phone. So you know we have a base station for this thing. It didn't come with the base station. This is a AEG Foxtel d570 whatever that means i don't uh, maybe that says something to the viewer i don't know but it doesn't say anything to me uh, i'm gonna have to grab two AAA batteries to see if this works i'm looking <laughs> i'm looking through the few finder to few finder to do this it's not that easy it does work Honestly, not that surprising to me. Wow, that's a very dull UI. <laughs> that's just green and gray. Doesn't have a doesn't have a graphics processor because you know uh, it refreshes everything every time. Uh, yeah, it does work. I will be smashing this as well. I will, in fact, I will probably make a video about smashing this because that will be really funny to smash this. I do not want to keep these because, you know, I mean, it is free stuff. It is free stuff. But, you know, I, I'm really not into household phones. So I'm sorry about that. Don't get mad at me in the comments for that, but I will be smashing this, but I will have fun with this. Um, so at least you got that. It's very creaky. Um, it doesn't look that old for a household phone. I've, I've seen some really old ones, but yeah. It does work. Let's move on to our third item, which is this Medion phone. Um, I did test this in the shop and it did work. It takes regular mini USB, I think. I'm pretty sure it does take regular mini USB. Let me grab my mini USB charger that I used to... Uh, let me plug that in. Oh, does that actually not fit? Never mind, it's charging and it works completely fine. I do not want to turn this on as it's super loud when you turn it on. It has this on and off switch. It was too, they said that, that it was too worn out to sell. So, you know, I just put this in my pocket. It's in pretty good condition. It's actually sim log to KPN. <laughs> not a reason why they couldn't sell this. So yeah. Is this like a card holder or something in the back? Hmm interesting this is a cell phone but it is a senior phone you know it's not like something you would give to your kids or something this is not this is not like that hmm, that's not a dedicate actually i will turn this on just for the sake of it let me mute the speaker 
Oh, it's the switch. It's gonna get really loud, okay? Yeah. Okay, so you can't do much. Can't do much with this. Um, phone book and settings. Oh, we gotta gotta turn that down. <laughs> This was probably used by like a deaf person or something because this 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 was set so loud it's insane yeah i'm not going to uh i'm not going to mess too much with this thing i mean of course y'all can't read it because it's dutch but you know let's turn it off oh it's actually way quieter now great okay um, I can I can show you it can show you the battery and stuff. You know why not? Why not do that? Um, sorry that I'm really quiet. By the way, it's not like I'm depressed or something. It's because my parents are here. This has a well done battery. <laughs> Look, it's a well done lithium ion battery, seven hundred fifty milliamp hours. Manufactured in Techcharm. Does it say? Yeah, what the hell? Whatever the hell tech charm is. This was actually made by Medion. It says Medion AG Germany. Uh, it's the Medion Mobile MDMP1200. Um, wherever the heck you can put the SIM card, I think it's like right here, but they hid it away or something. Oh, never mind. You just slide it in there. Okay. Yeah, this is not. This did not not come with the SIM card, but it did come with the little plastic holder that that originally came for the sim card and it's had an expiry date of 2011 on it so yeah this thing has not been used in ages in fact i'm going to plug it in and let it keep charging for a while yes i will be smashing this as well i'm really sorry but i again don't want to keep this i don't like it uh, they don't really the only mobile phones that i actually collect now are the really rare ones and I just take whatever computer stuff that I can take. Well, almost. If it has like a core to do or something, then I don't take it. Because, you know, I have enough stuff like that. But if it's something rare, like, I don't know, a laptop with a Pentium and a GPU, then it's something I would absolutely take with me. Uh, but not something like this. I'm going to smash this because, you know, smashing stuff is fun. Not sure if I'm going to make a video about it. M making a video about smashing stuff is really, um, really impractical. It's really annoying. Uh, I don't really see, really see it as good entertainment, because it's just, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something to it that makes it look really dumb in my opinion. So I'm just going to do that with my friend. I will be keeping this right there, and we will move on to our last and most exciting item for today. So. Definitely the best item here is this mini computer. So what is this? This is a compact mini PC and I absolutely wanted this thing so badly. Uh, it comes with everything. Despite that they wanted to throw this away. Uh, they wanted to throw this away because it didn't come with the adapter. Uh, look. Um, ugh. Well, no, I will not be taking it. We, we will be taking a look at the back in a minute. But this takes the usual HP 18.5 volt, 3.5 volt. Free. Let's try that again. This takes the normal HP, you know, the, the HP bar barrel, barrel plug with, you know, a little pin in the middle. 18.5 volt. 3.5 amp charger and I did not have that. I have two of them. I have a really really big one and a really small one and the small one happens to be exactly the charger that this used to come with. Uh, you know this is a really late compact. This is a compact from 2009 back when HP definitely already had bought them. I don't even know why this says compact on it because HP bought Compaq in like what, 2007, 2008? Just like Acer bought uh, Packard Bell back in 2008. I don't know, but this the date the date says 2009, fifth month, 17th day. Uh, so yeah, this is a very late Compaq and I really, really love it. So what are the specs of this thing? I don't know much about it, but it has a Intel Atom, which is, you know, 
the y'all everyone has their own opinion on the atoms <laughs> you know uh came with windows xp everything is in here all the original stuff is in here um, I will be opening it up. I will not be turning it on in this video. I'm really sorry about that, but I really want to just test it out with my friends. I will be calling with my friends, turning this thing on. Um, you know, I have vacation uh, in a few days, so I can definitely re review this thing. Well, review this thing. I will just take a look at this thing. Um, but for now, we will just do a simple overview. So the rear I.O. is definitely the most limited rear I.O. I've ever seen on a computer. You got... Like I said, 18.5 volts, 3.5 amps. Taking a look at the rear I.O., we got you got your charger in, PS2 keyboard, PS2 mouse, VGA, two USB 2s, pretty sure, Ethernet, mic jack, headphone jack, whatever the fuck the blue jack always is, and a Wi-Fi card. That's everything. Um, I don't understand why there's a slot here and you will take you will see why I don't understand that in a minute But that's literally everything um, in terms of front IO You got mic headphone jack two USB 2s and a SD card slot Which is always nice and handy to have a SD card slot uh, It came with Windows XP home Feel free to use that product key, I really don't mind, for net tops. So apparently this is a net top, I didn't even know that until now. <laughs> this is the Compaq CQ2000, if you're wondering. If you want to learn more information about this thing, if you're too curious about the processor and probably the integrated graphics that this has, um, you can Google Compaq CQ2000 and you will get this thing. So now we're going to open up this fella with a torque screwdriver as this uses the horrible HP torque screws. I really, really hate them. Uh, but yeah, I didn't let them throw this away, you know, purely for the adapter. Come on, man. This thing came with so much stuff. I had to take it. So I did. And I did it for y'all. Um, so yeah, we're just going to unscrew this. Take a look inside. Um... Spoiler, it's dusty. And I will also show you the date. Look how small this side panel is. This is my hand. I'm 16. Like, damn. If you take a look at the date here, it says 2009 05 17. So, how do we take this further apart? Well, you get the front bezel off first. Ugh. Bit hard to do one handed, but that's literally your front bezel. That's literally it. It's in really good condition, this computer. Then you just take out oh you take out these screws. Oops. You will see how this computer is actually pretty interesting. And then you can just grab this and take it out. We can have a look at our guts. So what does this have? Oh yes, a single stick of RAM. Yeah, this has one gigabyte of RAM. Um, here's our 160 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda 7200.10 hard drive. Um, I didn't Google this exact number. I don't know if it's SATA 2. I'm pretty sure it's SATA 2 and not SATA 1. Because if this is a system from 2009, I very highly doubt that it uses SATA 1. Because SATA 1 is from like 2004, 2005, 6. Yeah, 2006. Uh, uh, CPU is probably under here, I bet. Um... Use a tiny little exhaust fan. I first thought that was for the power supply, but there's no way they could have ever fitted a power supply inside this. There's an absolute ton of dust on the inside. I don't know if you can... Let me turn on the light. Yeah, there's an absolute shit ton of dust. I did not clean this, but, for, but look at how clean this system is. There may be dust, but this is so clean. This is definitely one of the cleanest computers that I've ever got. Um... Super bare bones, only two SATA ports, one whole RAM slot, has a gig of RAM, I can upgrade it to two gigs of RAM if I want to, but that's the max that I have, I really don't have a single stick of four gigabytes DDR2, I really don't, I do have many four gig sticks that are um, 
DDR3, but not DDR2. Hard drive is mounted like this, so there's no stupid proprietary bracket, which is really, really nice. Um, front panel connector stuff is right below the SATA. Audio is right there. Uh, jumper, you got your fan connector. It's just a really, really weird, it's just a really, really weird um, motherboard size. Uh, battery for the CMOS is, I bet, it's dead. I'm honestly pretty sure that it's dead. In a system in a system that's this cheap, look, how do we put this back together? You just do that and that, and then you put the screws in. Super, super. Also really easy to drop my camera. That will become a meme. But yeah, this thing is super easy to take apart. I really like it. Um, even if it doesn't have a GPU, which it probably won't. Really sure it won't have a GPU. Um, this is still a pretty fun thing to have. I've never heard of a net top before. Um, it's a pretty unique thing to have, you know. I'm going to put this back together off camera and then I'll catch up with you. Oh, also I forgot to mention the Wi-Fi card is right here. I have no idea what brand it is, but it is PCI Express 1X. So it's not a PCI card, which is nice, you know. Oh, oops, <laughs> that's the last part. First you put on, put on the, put the bezel back on, you know. Looks really ugly without the bezel. Super ugly. But yeah, you just, Go like this, drop the first two clips in place, if I can actually do that. There you go. I'm going to actually compare the size of this with my HP Thin client. I have a, I have a HP T5550 Thin client with a 1 GHz single core and HD graphics, you know. It's a completely FIA-based computer. No Intel or AMD. It's a FIA-based thing client, which is cool. Let's put that back in. Uh, but yeah, I will not be turning this on for now in this video. I will be doing that with a friend once he comes home. So yeah, that is our, that is our Compact QC2000. Really tempted to see what the system is going to be. Uh, let's compare the size to my Fin client. Comparing the size to my HP Fin client T5550, uh, I know it's not completely back together. Okay, I know I'm missing missing a few plastic parts from it and a couple screws. Uh, it actually has very similar rear I/O, except the Fin client wins because it has a parallel and a serial port, and two DVI's and no VGA. There's no crappy VGA here, uh, but yeah, the, the Fin client wins. It wins in both connectivity and size because it's smaller. But I'm pretty sure the Compaq wins in terms of performance. I'm pretty darn sure that the Compaq is faster than the Fin client because the Fin client is. Mm, the Fin client is older, but it uses DDR3 memory, except it's SODIMM, so it's laptop memory. Um, let's actually compare the rear I.O. real quick. Ugh, I really hate how this doesn't go back together. I'm missing a certain plastic part that goes on the top. Um, I think I'm also missing screws, but I'm not sure. It's, it really sucks. should really be able to just put it back together properly. Um, I really just prefer the design of the of the uh, compact the compact design is way nicer yeah that speaks for itself there's no more usb on there but there's dvi instead of vga which i like i prefer dvi um except there's no audio ports on there on here because the thin client was meant for business purposes this was more of a home computer than a business computer of course because you know it's pretty weak um, all the weak stuff gets targeted against the customers, you know. Um, but yeah, this is a serial in parallel. This does not have serial in parallel at all. It doesn't have those old legacy ports. Um, they both have Ethernet. Uh, the HP actually has two extra USB ports up here. So it wins in terms of USB. So it has six USBs in total, which is cool. Though you need to take apart the unit to get to those. So that sucks. Um, but yeah, I definitely prefer the compact. I mean, the compact looks way better. In fact, I might actually be able to resell this for 
10 bucks or something, who knows. Uh, you could use this as like a little retro gaming PC, you never know. So yeah, I'm going to put the Fink client back that I will probably never ever put back together. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video, taking a look at this AAG phone, the TomTom -tom and the, the Medium phone that's currently charging. You know, hope you all had fun and have a great day. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Not forcing you, but if you like this video, go ahead. Have a good day and see y'all in the next video.